He was born in Prince Alberts, and now he is uh, residing in Toronto, but it hasn't been a straight line from Saskatchewan to Toronto. That line has moved him from Edmonton, or to Edmonton, over to New York, uh, down into Atlanta, Georgia. Not Atlanta, Georgia. Yeah, Atlanta, Georgia. Up to New York, over to Toronto once again. Now he's the national anchor of the global television network's nightly news called The World Tonight. This is what it looks like when you watch at 11 o'clock on STV here Monday through Fridays in Saskatoon. The World Tonight with Richard Brown, Tuesday, March 15th. Good evening. I told you they'd freeze on you at a deep <laughs> frown like that. That's a pretty goofy look. <laughs> How does it feel coming from Saskatchewan? Is it special for you to see something like that still? Sure, it always is, especially now because uh, the World Tonight plays in Saskatoon yeah. on STV and in Regina on STV and CKND in Winnipeg. Yeah. You're home. You've come I am. home in a sense. And it, it feels like home. We were driving in from the airport tonight and I said, oh, I remember that. And, you know, used to, you know, have dinner there and mm -hmm. we went to university here, <laughs> got my degrees over at the U of S. You started broadcasting in PA? CKBI? Started there at CKBI in 1975. Was your aspiration to become the anchor of a national news service? I don't know. I, and I'm honest. I, um, I thought it was a great job. I mean, I, I was having fun at it. Because when we were at CKBI in 75, you did everything. I mean, you shot film. You mm -hmm. edited your own film. You, um, you know, did your own radio interviews, edited the tape. Um, first job I had was uh, rewriting news releases from the Saskatchewan government. So I started doing that, and six months later, I was doing afternoon radio. I uh, did one shift of afternoon radio and the 6 o'clock weather. And then another shift I had was uh, the 6 o'clock weather, the evening radio newscasts, um, and the 11.20 news after the, the CBC National. Mm -hmm. And I used to sit and watch uh, the National and think, boy, what would it be like, I wonder, if I could you know, get a job anchoring on a national newscast? And sure enough, it came true, but it was a long, circuitous route. I mean, you mentioned, you know, Edmonton, Atlanta, Georgia, Toronto, New York, back to Toronto. That's my resume looks like I can't hold a job. You know, okay. I've been... <laughs> it's like that for most in broadcasting, though. Jobs are not long-term, not 40-year terms or anything no, like that. No, not in the East and not in the big markets. Yeah. Out here in Saskatchewan and in Alberta, I think, and perhaps on the West Coast, people tend to find a place they like to live. When I was in Edmonton, I thought I'd love to stay in Edmonton. It's a wonderful city. Uh, but as it turned out, I didn't stay okay, in Edmonton. Okay, you were very... I worked uh, in Edmonton at the same time that you were working in Edmonton. You were very successful at CFRN TV in Edmonton, doing the supper hour news and, uh, and having a good time, obviously. What would drag you away from a successful position like that to go down to CNN at that time, was it not? Yeah, I went to CNN in Atlanta, Georgia. And you CNN were... at that time was starting what is now called CNN Headlines. Yeah. I don't know whether you get it up here we on cable to, or we not. We used to, we don't now. Yeah. Uh, and they were starting this new cable service, and it was going to be 30-minute blocks of news. In other words, for people, like it's fast food news. <laughs> for people with no time, you can get the news in 30 minutes, mm -hmm. right? And I thought, boy, that'd be interesting. And I was sitting at my desk one night. In fact, it was October of 1981, and I'm reading through Broadcasting Magazine, and I see an ad. It says, CNN needs producers, writers, anchors. And I thought, why not? So I sent them a tape uh, on a Friday. Thursday the following week, the phone rings. It's executive producer, and he says, can you come to Atlanta for an interview? I said, can I? <laughs> what time does the plane leave? Because it was, I found it really interesting that somebody would be interested in me and want me to go work for them. Mm -hmm. So I flew down to Atlanta, uh, we made a deal in one day, flew back, went in to talk to Bruce Hogel, who was the Vice President of News at CFRN, wonderful guy, mm -hmm. and he said, go for it. So I, w I went, uh, packed everything up again, and off I went to Atlanta, Georgia. Are you happy about that move? Oh yeah. It was really strange because I had gone to CTV for an interview in May of 81 because at that time they thought they might be looking for a weekend anchor. Keith Morrison was anchoring the weekends and CTV was going to start a business show, take Keith off the weekends and give him the business show. So they were looking for a weekend anchor. I'd gone to Toronto in May of 81, but nothing had developed. The business show had fallen through. Keith stayed on the weekends. I got to Atlanta 
in December of 81. July of 82, the phone rings. It's Tim Kotcheff, who's now vice president of news at CTV. Says, we need an anchor on the weekends. Morrison's gone to the journal. Mm -hmm. I said, I'm in a contract till December. I can't get out. Will you hold the job for me till December? Well, I don't know. I said, well, let me fly up. Let's talk about it. So I flew up to Toronto. We talked about it, and they agreed. They held the job for me until December of 82, mm. and then I flew up to Toronto and took the job as the weekend anchor on CTV in December of 82. I was in heaven.